Anyways, so that was him. <laughs> that didn't even get interesting. It just cut off. Let's see. We have, sir, hello. Sloth, which, you know. Uh, we already did Cody. Oh, yeah, I see. It does say their age. I just, I, I had forgotten. And these, yeah, all these guys. Oh, wait. Come on, older man. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Why is his age in question marks? <laughs> That's a bit questionable. Uh, that was that was bad. Um, <laughs> sure, let's do Sloth, aka Dimitri, a crypto developer. Okay, queen. I'm looking for a Dimitri Kanan. My hell equipment tells me he's at the Lotus Casino, in the penthouse suite. Must do well for himself. No time like the present to head over there. My watch says Lotus Casino is about three minutes from here. Convenient. I arrive at the Lotus Casino, a luxurious modern casino with a deceptively soft exterior. I Lotus honestly, Casino I hate is it. set far back from the I main Las Vegas Strip, giving it an alluring terrible. exclusivity. This looks terrible. Not that it's drawn terribly. I just think, like, what kind of awful taste and decor is this? Do y'all not think this looks gaudy and tacky in the worst way possible? Like the little lotuses all surrounding one big lotus with some green fucking tube stuck into it. And then the 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 leaf-covered walls? This looks like a botanical sanctum gone wrong. The casino is lit by a gentle purple and silver color scheme. Massive gentle. incense burners line the pathway to the casino, and a pleasant smell of wood and lavender wafts softly from them. I walk inside, and the doorman nods to me. It is much less crowded inside. Maybe that's due to the price? I notice immediately that the people here are younger than the average age you would see at a casino normally. Young tech geeks with their ironic beards. College-age entrepreneurs? I wonder what's going on to attract these people here. My watch and health phone showed me Dimitri is also very young. Or at least looks very young. He certainly wouldn't stick out here. How should I try to find him? Ask the front desk? I walk up to the front desk, and a smartly dressed woman greets me. Hello! Are you checking in? Oh my god, hello, queen. You make me think of Katara from The Last Airbender, and that makes me happy. No, I'm here looking for someone. His name is Dimitri Kanan. I see. You must be here for the conference. Conference? Yes. Dimitri is here for three more days giving a presentation on a new craze. Cryptocurrencies, I believe they are called. <laughs> <laughs> Can you water bend this weird green water shit in the middle out of here? Because I, I really think it looks hideous. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I am here for the conference. Is he giving a presentation today? Unfortunately, I believe he is wrapping up his presentation for the day. If you go on to our grand ballroom, you may be able to sit in on his question and answer session. Ah, great. Thank you so much. My pleasure, sir. Oh. The casino has illuminated <laughs> signs hanging from the ceiling. Let's see. Table games, pool... Ah, grand ballroom. Another casino? Can you come up with something else? Can you come up with something else? I wonder what sloth is like. Lazy, probably. How do you seduce laziness? Hey there, I like doing nothing too. Yeah, sure, that's exactly how you do it. I pass a blackjack table, and I double take the minimum bet. Fifty dollars. This casino is truly a place for the privileged in life. How did Sloth become rich if he's the deadly sin of Sloth? Seems counterintuitive. I continue to follow signs to the grand ballroom. I pass several smaller conference rooms on the way, until I see a handmade sign directing people inside the grand ballroom. Litcoin International Conference. Don't mind me. I'll just head in. I am going to be a little peeved if, like, every other deadly sin is this well-off pseudo-entrepreneur. Like, not that I want literal interpretations of all the sins, but if they're all going to be kind of rich, holier-than-thou people, it's going to be a little reductive, right? <laughs> I get a couple curious looks from the people at the door. 
but I do my best to act like I'm supposed to be here. I'm lust. Of course I'm supposed to be here. I take a seat in back. There's a young man on stage giving a lecture on stuff I don't understand. Everyone in the conference seems fixated on his every word. The speaker is short, and he's wearing pajamas? And a bathrobe? Odd. Again, I cannot emphasize enough that Litcoin is the currency of the future. I will now take a few questions before ending today's presentation. Please raise hands and an assistant will run a microphone to you. I have the sneaking suspicion the speaker is Mr. Sloth. His clothing somewhat gives him away. He's pretty good at public speaking. He seems to really know what he's talking about. He's not bad looking either. He has that cute boy next door kind of charm. Not bad. Not bad. Well, it's a pass from me. Um, boot. Gowns. Beautiful gowns. Yes, you in the black jacket. Give our assistant just a second to run you the microphone. All right, what is your question? First of all, I want to thank you, Dimitri, for coming and giving an awesome presentation. I'm honored to be here at the start of such large and massive opportunities. So it is sloth. That's good to know. My question is, how will Litcoin move forward as an international currency if major First World nations continue to place restrictions on the purchase and trading of it? A good question. The simple fact of the matter is... Excuse me. The simple fact of the matter is everything in the world is becoming more digitized, more secure. Governments may be able to stall the progress, that is true. But whether through adoption or simply the slow march of time, Litcoin will become a major player as its own respected currency. Nations will have no choice but to accept new technology as necessary, rather than an option. It is inevitable. That was a bad pitch. <laughs> what kind of nations will have no choice but to accept new technology? Have y'all heard of a damn debit or credit card? A PayPal? What the fuck is Litcoin going to offer, girl? Thank you for the question. Next. Mm, yes, you, in the blue hat. Thank you. My question revolves around security. There have been some large security breaches where people have lost vast sums of money. How can you assure people this is a rare occasion, and what precautions should they take? Another good question. The answer has two parts. One, the large security breaches are usually done internally. An independent website that allows trading of cryptocurrencies can overlook many security threats despite taking precautions. I recommend that you trade only on Litcoins.com as I myself have personally guaranteed the security of trades and accounts. So basically, um, no. <laughs> I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass. Second, caution should be taken whenever you decide to put money in any investment. Cryptocurrency or otherwise. You better turn them away. Cryptocurrency is a new movement that is receiving backlash from established banks and governments. Obviously, they do not like their power structure being threatened. I mean, I'm sure that's true. Um, but also, there's kind of like a rational reason to be opposed to this. Uh, because of this uncertainty and the power struggle inherent in any new technology, I advise people that are worried about their finances to not invest. So basically y'all are gonna sink. Okay, good to know. If you believe in the vision and are okay with potentially losing your investment, then I advise you to do so. I believe there is a great chance of profit, but I am no fortune teller. Only invest if you are able. Do not view cryptocurrency as a certainty. At least he's honest, but is this the most smart decision as a businessman? I'm not sure, girls. All right, one last question. Let us hear from a lady this time. Does any lady present have a question? What kind of tokenism? <laughs> yes, you, lady in the red sweater. Like, oh yeah, no, we, we need to include a female perspective just because, you know, it'll look better, girl. Also, why is there a random bird? I hate how this place is decorated. Who designed this? <laughs> like what? Like you're gonna hold a business conference in this awful leaf covered wall room with this huge obnoxious plant and this random like tropical bird perched in front of the 
screen? Why? Thank you. My question is not pertaining to Litcoin at all. My question is simply, are you single? <laughs> I am indeed single. Unfortunately, I trade on the opposite currency, if you get my meaning. Okay, well, good to know. Aww, that's all right. I'll set you up with my best friend if you're interested. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for the concern. I appreciate all the questions. I will see you all back here tomorrow for our discussion on small business cryptocurrency adoption and how it will affect our movement. They should have had... Um... They should have had just a guy asking that. <laughs> I, d I don't see... I don't know. There's something mad suspect about the whole, like, oh, we need to ask a lady a question. Do y'all not find that mad suspect? I don't know. I feel a little bit... I feel a little, like, disrespect is being thrown around here. Like, what? You're gonna... Like, y'all really gonna have, like, one female come up, ask some, like... Oh my god, you're so cute. Are you single type of question? Like, hmm. Okay, yet yeah, you're giving all the men, like, all the serious business questions? Hmm. I think that says more about this game than it does about women. Hmm. That is all for today. Thank you all for attending. Let's all get some rest. Sloth gets up and is immediately flanked by a few security guards. I have to talk to him. What should I do? Then again, this is a boys love game. I can't think of a single boys love game where there's like a prominent female character. These games aren't really, I mean, they're for guys who like guys. So <laughs> run up and talk to him. I run up to Sloth as he's making his way oh, off fuck the stage. Off. I'm immediately intercepted by his security guards. Hey, 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 hey. Can we help you with something? The presentation is over for the day. Oh, that's no problem. I was just wanting to speak with Dimitri. I'm a huge fan. I want him to. I wanted to ask him how does he feel about women, cause I don't know. That was some mad shady shit. <laughs> mm, hi there. It's fine, guys. I can take a moment to talk to a fan. How's it going? What's your name? It's going great. My name is Kosuke. Kosuke Adai. I really loved your presentation. Oh, what was your favorite part? Um. Uh. Ah, I'm a fan of that as well. Did you know I developed most of that technology myself through my own startup company? Oh my God! There's someone knocking at the front door. Let me just, let me just take a minute and see who it might be. All right, I don't recognize the person, so if someone else has someone coming to the house, that's their problem, not mine. I don't really open to strangers. Rule of thumb. Wow, that's really amazing, since you're so young as well. <laughs> I am young. How young do you think I am? Hmm, how old should I say he is? That's correct. I opted not to go to college in favor of pursuing my company, Litcoin International. That's awesome. There's risk to that, but I'm really glad it worked out for you. Oh, thanks. That's really nice of you. Do you have any other questions you'd like me to answer? Hmm. What topic should I ask Sloth about? Um... Sloth yawns loudly, oh, as if he's sake. completely <laughs> bored with the conversation. No, I am simply here giving a presentation to early adopters of Litcoin. Not many places are as easy to travel to from international locations as America is. Oh, I guess that's true. Where do you live then? You should be able to tell from my name alone. I am from Russia. I reside in St. Petersburg. Aha, it's silly me. What are you doing in Vegas? Hmm, what does bring me to Vegas? Oh god, um, does it really matter though? We're playing the demo. Oh my god, this person is constantly knocking. I don't care. I'm not gonna answer the door. <laughs> I don't know who the person is. And it's not like it's some postman or some... I don't know. It doesn't seem to... It just seems like some random person. I have no idea who the fuck they are. 
Uh, looking for a new opportunity. Fuck, let's be tacky. Oh, you came for me? Well, I haven't yet, but we could see where the night takes us. Uh, <laughs> well, this is a new experience for me. Most people think I'm too short or too young to date. What do you think? What do I think of Sloth's appearance? Um, it's like a one out of ten. <laughs> Um, I don't really like how either of these sound, but let's just go with the simple one. Hmm. I don't really have time for a useless chatter. Please enjoy the conference. I must be going. Okay, well, fine. Wait, I... You are the man. Beat it. I watch Sloth leave hurriedly and feel a lingering sense of dread in my stomach. This hell better keep knocking, girl. You better keep knocking. I don't care. I'm so ha I'm going to hope my mic isn't picking this shit up. <laughs> Why is the game not running, by the way? Hello, game? Oh my god, the game is just like frozen. Are y'all seeing this? Look, I'm clicking. I'm clicking. I mean, you can't hear me clicking, but I'm clicking. Okay. All right. So, hello here. We're back. The game just straight up froze. I tried clicking things. They wouldn't click. They wouldn't work. So, uh, I guess we're just going to go ahead and uh, go for gluttony. Oh, my God. This person is still fucking knocking. Damn. I'm not answering. Some of y'all might call me rude in the comments. Would y'all really answer for some random stranger? No. Anyways, let's start. I select Gluttony, and the watch immediately homes in on where he is. It says he's at a Chinese food buffet. I guess that's not really surprising. Wait a minute, I didn't even read, read the billboards. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Okay, well. Come on, Pussycat Dolls promo. His name is John Anderson. He looks like a pretty cheerful guy. I guess I'll head over to the restaurant and see if I can catch him when he exits. The door finally got answered. My One of my housemates came, and the guy was, like, looking for someone who wasn't even here. <laughs> so, I was right not to waste my time. I walk down the Vegas Strip, away from the high-end casinos, towards the old end of town. The farther I go, the older and more run down the buildings and casinos become. Trash and cigarettes carpet the ground here. Several people walk around. They seem to have no place to be. This definitely isn't a tourist area. I spot the Grand China Buffet as I walk. It's a standalone building crowded between a strip mall. I decide to sit on a bench and wait for a tall man to exit, matching the appearance of the small image on my phone. After 30 minutes of waiting and no movement on my watch, I decide to go in. I'm not hungry, but I can at least see what he's doing in there, and prepare to talk to him. I walk inside and allow my eyes to adjust from the sunlight to the dim interior lighting. The interior is decorated in typical Chinese buffet style. The majority of the restaurant is empty, except for one table in back that has a mountain of dirty dishes on it. A tall, muscular guy that looks exactly like the image on my phone. So, I would say one thing for this game going forward, assuming it gets a full release, is I would change it so that if you just click on the text box, like the dialogue box, it'll move to the next piece of dialogue, rather than this tiny little arrow that has this stupid next line prompt show up. I found John Anderson, Lucifer's current deadly sin of gluttony. I glance around. The employees of the restaurant look depressed, and the staff peer out at gluttony with apprehension. He must be a regular. I think I should go talk to him, but maybe that's too forward. Maybe he'll be annoyed that someone interrupted his eating? Um, We have nothing to lose. I decide to walk over to him, and he notices me, but simply looks at me quizzically while continuing to devour a plate of crab legs. Hi there! Gluttony finishes chewing and burps loudly. Charming. I'll have to teach him some manners. 
Whoops, sorry about that. How's it going? Going well. Uh, I was just coming over to say hi. And try to get in those pants. Ew. This may sound weird, <laughs> but I thought you were attractive and figured I'd say so. How are you? I'm not trying to get in those pants when he's wearing shorts. Anyways. Oh, thanks. I am doing great. I'm absolutely destroying this buffet. I came in right after my morning jog. I certainly worked up an appetite. Oh god, I'm getting so fucking hungry now. Karma is coming for me. <laughs> I can see that. I was wondering if you'd be up to go out sometime. I normally don't ask people so frankly, but hey, why not, right? I am so smooth. Uh-huh. I love the honesty. Honestly. I think that this world has gotten sort of touch with new tech and that social media crap. I can appreciate when someone talks in real life. Okay, girl. I see you're one of those. Hmm. Anyways, I'm just gonna move on. So, is that a yes? Hmm. Hmm. I'm interested, but I gotta tell ya, I maintain a very active lifestyle. I'm just about to go hit up the gym after I finish off the last of these Rangoons. I love Rangoons. Wanna come to the gym with me? It could be a test date. Really? The gym as a date? I mean, I guess it's cute to work out together, but is that really a lot of time to talk? That sounds good to me. Mind if I sit while you finish? I guess I say that because I know the few times I've been to the gym, I have music on with earphones plugged in, so I can't hear anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm focusing on exercising. Please, do. I sit down with Gluttony and witness an absolute marvel of consumption. Gluttony burns through six more plates before dabbing the corners of his mouth daintily. Before we head out, I'm sorry for being so rude. I don't even know your name. Mine's John. Mine's Kosuke. It's great to meet you. Wow, that's a super cool name. It's like from one of those uh, Japanese cartoons. So awesome. Um, I'm just gonna say nothing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that that was a fake laugh. Kosuke was like this dumbass bitch. <laughs> well, lunch was delicious, as always. I come here twice a week because it's all you can eat for four ninety nine. Can't beat that price. Okay, well we like a budget spender. <laughs> I guess not. You ready to hit the gym? Damn, the fake laugh's coming out of Kosuke, though. You can really tell he's just like, he's here for the dick and nothing else. You just read my mind. I've got a killer workout planned for today. Oh my god, okay, you sound a little bit like Song the Hedgehog. I'm gonna need y'all to simmer down, collect some rings. Let's go then. Alright, follow me. We exit the Chinese buffet. And Gluttony starts jogging. I run to keep up with him. Hey, uh, are we going to the gym? We sure are. It's only a couple of miles from here. Just follow me. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Gluttony sets off jogging at a brisk pace, and I suddenly have massive doubts about my ability to seduce him. I've never been the physical fitness type, after all. I have to give it my best shot, though. What would Lucifer do if I failed? We jog past some run-down abandoned strip malls and through a couple shady-looking alleyways. Gluttony doesn't appear to be bothered at all, so I guess I'm not bothered by the area either. It probably helps that he's tall, muscular, probably has a massive dick, too. Mmm, no. <laughs> Being lust gives you intrusive thoughts. By the time we arrive at a gym called Planet Swole, I'm gasping for breath. Gluttony doesn't seem like it's anything out of the ordinary for him. Gluttony stops and runs slowly in place. You did great. We're here. I'm having a mega cramp after running right after all that salt intake. Let's go get hydrated before we continue. Uh, okay. Uh. I follow Gluttony inside, my legs feeling wobbly from the unexpected run. Thankfully, there's a water fountain close by. Gluttony goes up to the check-in counter while I desperately gulp down water. Hey, Kate. Me and my friend Kosuke checking in today. Just letting you know. Is it pizza day? I'm getting a little hungry. No, John. That's only once a week, and it was yesterday. 
Darn. Oh, well. Thanks, Kate. You're the best. Have a good workout, John. I finish drinking and rejoin Gluttony. He looks excited to get started. All right, bro. We can do one of two things to get started. We can hit up the sauna. It's great to loosen your muscles before a workout. Or we can just help each other stretch and get straight to the workout. It's up to you. Oh, God. I feel like I'm getting Wii Fit flashbacks. What do you want to do? My man, that's how I like to start off too. You got any gym clothes? Hmm, no, unfortunately. That's alright, I got some extra stuff here. You might have to tie the waistband tight, but the tank top should do just fine. Don't worry, it's all clean. I'm not gonna give you something all musty. Okay, well, my read on him so far is he seems like, like an alright individual. I'm not really interested though. Like, I don't think he's funny, witty, or really all that special, but, uh, inoffensive, I guess, is okay. I'll accept it. <laughs> all right. Let's go get your stuff, and I'll change. Awesome, man. Follow me. We walk to the locker room, where a variety of people in various stages of undress mill around. Apparently, Planet Swole has a pool. The locker room smells like chlorine. Because, if anything, he kind of reminds me of, like, a... One of the love interests from Camp... Well, not Camp Buddy, uh, Dream Daddy. A few guys in bathing suits walk past and give us a nod. Gluttony ignores everyone and walks purposefully to his locker. Here we are. This is my battle station. I keep some electrolyte replacements and extra gym clothes here just in case, you know? Seems like a good plan. What have you got for me to wear? Something... Spicy, perhaps? You're really gonna get loose over gym wear? Come on. Do you want to wear, like, a jock strap while y'all work out? Well, that's gonna be up to you. I'll let you pick what you want and give you a second to change. When you're ready, just stuff your other clothes into my locker and we'll hit the sauna. Alright. I'll be just a second. Hmm. What should I wear? I make my selections and stow my extra clothes in Gluttony's locker. I round the corner where Gluttony is waiting to give me privacy. Hey, looking good, not gonna lie. All right, you need anything else before we hit the sauna? No, I think I'm good. All right, let's go. We walk to the sauna entrance. There's a couple people sitting inside, but plenty of space for everyone to sit. Grab a towel if you want. I normally stay in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, This is a little much for me. This is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous! What? <laughs> His body does not look good. <laughs> and I mean that in many ways. Yikes! What the fuck? What kind of steroid usage? Girl. This is just too chiseled. Like, the 0% body fat, I can't. Without warning, Gluttony takes off his clothes and places them on a clothing rack outside the sauna. I stare at his ass. Hey. I'm lost. I'm only a little shameless. Gluttony loops a towel over his shoulder and walks in. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be naked too, so I just take off my shirt, grab a towel, and follow Gluttony in. Gluttony sits down and places <gasps> the towel over his lap. Before he does, I notice that he's got an absolutely enormous dick, even when it's soft. I file that information away for later. And sit down next to him. Okay, his dick is huge and out, so there will be a sensor bar over him. <laughs> okay, his body looks way more realistic and pleasant here, but that portrait art we had right before this, oh my god, yeah, no, it was not the T. Kosuke looks alright. He looks alright. I don't know, saunas kind of make me think of that scene where Kojaku and Alba had sex in Reconnect in Kojaku's bathroom where it was all steamy and that was like aesthetically a very pleasing scene to look at. Kojaku looks so good, so hot, <laughs> so beautiful. Ah, <sighs> uh, Nothing like the sauna. It really clears the lungs, gets you ready for a good workout. I haven't been in many saunas. You missed out then. It's good for your health, too. I think. I don't actually know. But it feels like it. We sit for a moment, and Gluttony rests his head back. 
Eyes closed, I take the opportunity to check out the body he's working with. And I'll be working with soon. Hopefully. It's all tight, lean muscle. His chest has ridges in places I didn't even know were possible. His waist is small in proportion to the rest of his body, and his legs are very well toned. He appears to be in peak physical condition, despite his obvious and alarming food consumption. I feel a little bad about my muscles in comparison to gluttony. Maybe I'll gain some muscles while being with him. After a few minutes, gluttony sits up and towels himself off. You all set, Kosuke? I am totally ready to hit some weights. I'm good whenever you are. Awesome, let's go. Gluttony gets up and deposits the towel in a used towel bin, before putting on his clothes. I rub my own towel over my body and do the same. Gluttony sure is comfortable with casual nudity. Way more comfortable than I've ever been. But I guess I should get used to it, since I'm lust and all. <laughs>